JP here. These are highlights of three recent runs to the edge of space. On September 8th, 2024, we flew three high altitude balloon missions. These flights were in partnership with the amazing Japanese flower artist, Azuma Motoko. Our job was to show off his creations 18 miles up where the sky meets space. This was exobiotanical number three. This is our third time out with this project, starting with exobiotanical number one back in 2014. These images are from the first set of flights. We flew two vehicles in exobiotanical one, three vehicles in exobiotanical two, and three again on this flight, exobiotanical three. I'm not gonna show the flowers for this flight. Those are for the artist to unveil. What we have here is some great clips of the launch up top at 103,000 feet, some intense balloon burst imagery and recovery operations in our eight wheel, yes, eight wheel drive Argo balloon recovery tank. We launched three balloons in three hours with a crew of 20. Okay, here we go. Launches always begin with a team meeting. It's really a moment to get the team centered and focused. After muffins and coffee, it's off to space. While the system team prepares the vehicle, the balloon team starts flowing helium. This is the launch of Away 134, the second of the day. We launched each vehicle an it's hour apart, sunshine. starting at 6.30 a.m. This was a Way 135, the last up. Ooh, she's Ooh. away! Ooh, <laughs> One camera was pointed straight up. Note how small the balloon is here. This is on board a Way 135. It was the third vehicle of the day. It had the highest flight of the day, reaching 103,000 feet. Mission Control is getting updates from the vehicle every 30 seconds. There are four GPSs on board, providing a fix accurate down to 17 centimeters. Plus, there is a backup satellite uplink and a long duration tracking beacon. We also record temperature, pressure, humidity, light intensity, horizontal velocity, and climb rate every 10 seconds throughout the whole flight. That's the Black Rock Desert passing through the center of the screen with Pyramid Lake just to the left side of it. I want to pause a moment and thank our supporters over on Patreon. You really keep us flying. You can check out our Patreon page. It's in the link in the description below. Find out how you too can be part of the team. The balloon bursts when it reaches a certain diameter. We calculate how much helium to put into the balloon that will achieve that diameter at the altitude we want. With variations of pressure and temperature of the day, the manufacture of the balloon, and the weight of the vehicle, it's not a precise number. But we're pretty good at getting the altitude close to the mark. Mission Control can tell when we're approaching balloon burst. The climb rate starts dropping off just a bit. This is the balloon losing its ability to expand. This happens in the last few minutes of the climb. The temperature dropped to negative 61 degrees Fahrenheit at 48,000 feet. As we climbed up into the stratosphere, the temperature starts to go up. At this altitude, it's a toasty one degree Fahrenheit.
back to balloon cam. Away 135 was only 13 miles downrange when the balloon burst. The team could see the burst from the ground. Good shoot! Away 135 took a picture of its own shadow before landing. Now on to recovery. All three vehicles landed in great locations. Here we're going after Away 135. It was 15 miles downrange and six miles off a gravel road. Our Argo recovery vehicle made short work of it. The next day we went after away 133 and 134. Away 133 was only a mile out from a dirt road. However, we would need some steep, rugged climbing for Away 134, so we left the Argo at home and just did it with our boots. The best part of the mission is when you get that first glimpse of the vehicle while on recovery. This is what the flight of Away 133 looked like with the flight data entered into Google Earth. We had an amazing experience. The challenges, the successes, working with the team, and just being out in the desert, doing things at the edge of space. The weather after several delays was perfect. The Japanese team and the US team melded into one and we were in the zone. The last vehicle, Away 135, was our 203rd flight. And today that I'm recording this is JP Aerospace's 47th anniversary as an organization. Back then, I was just a kid with a business license and a JPA t-shirt. Now, 47 years later, I'm just a kid with a business license, a JP Aerospace t-shirt, and a balloon. See you back here for the next adventure, and thank you for watching. JP Aerospace, America's other space program.